for the 4 o'clock news and politics here downtown. 3 o'clock was Molly O'Brien with lifestyle well, uh, health and well-being around the holidays, as well as some live music that's coming here to Rhode Island this weekend, so check out that segment if you haven't already. Before I welcome my first guest, we have some sad news that is on Go Local right now. The West Elmwood intruders who were playing in the national championships in Florida ha have an unfortunate accident take place. Early this morning, a mother was driving back through South Carolina in a van with a friend along with five children. The mother driving the van was killed when she went across the road. A couple of the children in surgery. You can read more about that on Go Local. We'll have more about that to come, but thoughts and prayers go out with the West Elmwood intruders family here from Go Local. I do want to welcome my first guest here into studio. He's usually here on Thursdays, but we switched him over to the Friday slot to start off the weekend. Bob Whitcomb is around because the corner. Of technical difficulties. Technical difficulties. Literal. What are those? Step in the Literal. box over yeah, here, yeah, sir. Yeah, but you're all good on the tech front. Yeah, yeah we're all, well, I'm going back to mimeograph machines. <laughs> and the great thing about mimeograph, you can drink the fluid. No, you can't. Yeah, yeah. So Learn like something new every day. Certain je ne sais quoi. <laughs> Bob Whitcomb comes uh, in. But I, so I brought, a, I, I brought a cup of hemlock. Very good. Yeah, well, week. That'll yeah. start off the weekend yeah. in fine form. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, dead. <laughs> well, it's been I quite ride. the week for some folks around the country. Let's start off with yeah. what's happening in D.C. Right, right. Between Conyers earlier this week and then Al Franken. What? It was yeah, your Al reaction. Franken, and then the really bizarre case of was it the Arizona congressman who quit because he offered he wanted to uh, he wanted a couple of the young women in his office to carry his child. Mm. That is so bizarre. I don't know what to say. But in any event, he is uh, resigning, retiring. Uh, I guess early next month, sometime. That's so bizarre. Is that sexual harassment, or is it just being <laughs> insane? Yeah. You know? Why not adopt? You know, you know, I'm I'm afraid we'll be hearing more stories moving forward. But yeah, you know, and I don't know, you know, annals of animal husbandry and all that. But I mean, that is the weirdest thing. Yeah, that's as weird yeah. as they get. Did you did you foresee at the outset <laughs> of all the Al Franken allegations that he would end up stepping down? Uh yes. You did. <laughs> I, I sort of did. Yeah, because he'd been in show business, and th this kind of behavior is not unheard of in show business. I think what he did is is actually far less bad than. Uh, a lot of the other stuff I've heard back when I worked in New York and stuff, in L.A. and stuff. And I, I think uh, Franken is, actually his stories were milder than many, put it that way. He certainly was no Harvey Weinstein. And he certainly was an oaf, and the Democrats wanted him to go so they could uh, uh, look better compared to Roy Moore, who's an accused pedophile. Who will probably be elected. Who will likely win. It is snowing yeah. in Alabama yeah. today. Did you know that? Snowing? It's snowing in Alabama. It's the wrath of God. <laughs> it's got to be the wrath of God. It's pictures from Texas, guy. pictures from Alabama. No. Uh, snow down there. Getting some snow this weekend. That's right. And snow in Atlanta, too. Which And all it, all it takes is about an inch and a half in Atlanta to paralyze the whole thing. New Orleans. I believe there's some snow in... Uh, really? Yeah. New Orleans. Yeah. Oh, my God. Global cooling. <laughs> global global right. cooling. Anyway, with Frank, and I, I know a little bit about him because half my family is from Minnesota. And I think he's considered very smart. He was actually a pretty good constituent guy, very hardworking. But, you know, a show business background. I, my biggest problem with Frank, besides the obvious, you know, the sexual harassment, is I never thought he was very funny. I never quite <laughs> got that. That's my that the Saturday your problem Night with Live <laughs> stuff and the other stuff. I just never thought he was funny. He came out with that book, you know, was it? Uh, Frank and Al Frank and Giant of the Senate. It's supposed to be the sort of tongue in cheek thing, but. Have, just never found him funny. No, no just Does he have a second act? It. Yeah, he'd probably run a think tank. Or he may become a go local host. <laughs> yeah. We've had no yeah. conversations he with Frank. He could do your Franken. weather, maybe. With a lot of little We've got John Giorci yeah. will be providing yeah. updates about the snow that's expected to come this weekend. No, you need somebody with a more exciting background. John is too dignified. <laughs> John is very television. dignified. He yeah. came in, he was up here in studio. It's great always to hear from John. Oh, he's great. But speaking of local uh, Delight, politics and local guy, no, local no, no, no. news, yeah. what do you think of what's going on with the St. Joseph's pension collapse, and specifically yeah. the diocese and the attorney general's office? Let's go to the diocese. The, yeah, the piece yeah. that Go Local had today was a, a, a trust document that, yeah, that yeah. delineated clearly the role and responsibility that the bishop has. Under the Department of the Attorney General, who's supposed to oversee all this stuff. Yeah. I think it's really unfortunate, and I think the diocese is not... 
uh, excelled in uh, transparency or responsibility in this. It's, it's too bad. Are there legal and bad. then moral obligations? Well, I think, you know, it's tough to run pension funds, God knows, and all that stuff. But I think you're, uh, I think that it's something of a public trust. It's certainly for a trust for these, uh, these people, these nurses. And I think they have an obligation to be as transparent as possible, and clearly they were not. And other, otherwise, we would have known the problems were coming down the road. A long they had time no, they ago. had no idea. Uh, <clears throat> it wasn't. It, uh, they were, I don't know, dishonest. They were certainly irresponsible in failing to properly fund it over the years. Very much like uh, many political jurisdictions who fail to fund these mm -hmm. things, so they just want to shove it off, the can, kick, kick, kick in it, the can. and they hope they won't be in office when the when the bill comes due. Maybe the bishop thought he'd be retired to uh, Montreal or something uh, by the time the uh, all this came out. Uh, but I think it's been quite irresponsible. I hope they can put it right. I feel sorry for the nurses, and uh, and I should emphasize, by the way, that the. These sort of Catholic pensions, uh, some of them are okay. Mm -hmm. I know this because my wife used to teach in a Catholic school. Mm -hmm. She was the uh, art teacher in a parochial school. They apparently are okay. That was apparently another, another pile of uh, of money. Uh, there's been some better managed fund, uh, better, really better, managed. better conversion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think the transparency thing. Every six months or whatever, there should be a clear and uh, clear, you know, crystal and clear about what the status of the pension fund is. And what if folks, I mean, you know, you hear them, they're like, how much real estate does the church own? Not just here, everywhere. They're embarking on a... A lot less than they used to have. Capital the campaign. priest abuse stuff. Boy, do they have Well, do you think we're going to yeah. see properties being sold off in this sense here? Do you think they're going to dig their... I think it's possible, yeah. I mean, parishes are shrinking. Uh, Catholics are now as... Uh, are becoming as uh, weak uh, churchgoers as Protestants have <laughs> long been, except for the evangelicals, you know, the sort of the Roy Moore crowd. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think... Uh, I think they will probably look for more stuff to sell, maybe a church in a, in a parish with uh, you know, very few parishioners, so it's sort of eight parishioners and one priest. So I, th I think you'll probably see that. But I think the big sales have already been done, which poor Bishop Mulvey, who's a wonderful man, uh, had to preside over because of the, the abuse stuff. Well, all eyes are going to continue to be on yeah. St. Joseph's, the pension yeah. fund, and these retirees that right. have seen their pensions yeah. soon to be slashed. It's they're, very they're at, sad. They were not, you know, they were not particularly compensated in their jobs. It was certainly a public service. They weren't just serving Catholics. They were serving other people, too, even Druids like me. <laughs> You're they're, a Druid. They're, I'm a Druid. I'm a devout, devout Druid. I think we've talked about so, that before. So transparency. Transparency. Yeah. Speaking of transparency, yeah. they just released a new POSOX legislation yesterday on the Senate side. More expensive. More expensive. More expensive. And expensive. they're going to take it up when the Assembly's back in. If you're a betting man here on December 8th, what happens? So they're going to approve it. It seems like it's a done deal from the rhetoric I'm hearing, which gets me to something that uh, our friend Josh Fenton said suggested and we, we he and I were sort of chatting about this but not in a joking way. Why don't they think out, outside the box? The most rapidly growing big sport in America I believe is probably soccer. Mm -hmm. Why not just forget the whole you know farm team thing for uh, the Red Sox and move the New England Revolution to a big stadium in Pawtucket? Uh, if you look at the demographics, uh, Hispanics, Asians, others, not, not to mention uh, high school kids and so on, uh, you know, soccer is the is the big thing. But you think that you think that even after this legislation yeah. and the cost increase, yeah. you still think it's going to. I think success. so. That's my hunch, just from the rhetoric. I mean, whatever, whatever you know, whatever the arithmetic looks like, you go by the the rhetoric of the people in the legislature and the people uh, closely connected with them. They seem to be saying, "Oh, yeah, this is just hunky dory." Well, we'll see when they're yeah. back in January. But um, think soccer. Maybe think maybe so. if this thing goes down the, the toilet, so to speak, maybe somebody will come up with some really revolutionary idea. Think soccer. So to speak. Speaking, yeah. of, speaking of revolutionary ideas, yeah. my next guest yeah. and I are going to talk at length about the issue of... Yeah, Russell Taub. Yeah. Russell Taub's yeah. around the corner, yeah. the issue of Jerusalem. Very interesting. I've been to Jerusalem. I've been all over Jerusalem. And I guess my reaction to this, first of all, actually Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. That's where Israel's run from. And I think there's sort of a misconception about this because the uh, most countries have their embassies in Tel Aviv, mm -hmm. which is I don't know 45 minutes away on the ocean, on the on the sea. So I think I think if people sort of accept that reality, it'd be useful. Uh, obviously, ev virtually every country in the world opposes this move, mm. uh, but 
I think if Trump has kind of turned over the apple cart and made people look at this whole situation in a new way, it may, I doubt it, but it could work out, could work out. The old, you know, you can't make an omelet without breaking eggs. Maybe this will stir up new kinds of thinking. And you could have the two-state solution ultimately with the, uh, with the Arabs, the Palestinians, and East Jerusalem, and the, uh, and the, uh, the, uh, the Jewish state uh, headquartered in uh, West Jerusalem, which well, is the way it is now. We'll yeah. see a lot of attention paid on it this yeah. week, especially, as yeah. you said, the international reaction. Yeah, which has been overwhelmingly negative, predictably negative. Mm. There have been some rioting, uh, you know, but, you know, there was plenty of rioting before this <laughs> happened. So the Palestinians, you know, demonstrate riot. There are a lot of them are very angry. This happens a lot. But again, if this sort of stirs up the, the neurons, uh, maybe something good could come out of this, you know? And well, I, we'll I, I think Trump did this to appeal to his uh, political base, evangelicals, in parts of the Jewish community, not all of it. Uh, you know, and, and okay, whatever. All these but, I mean, past presidents have made these best promise before. Well, not really. Yeah. Not not like this. Not saying, okay, we hereby, as of today, oh, no, officially they, recognize. No, they have not yeah. taken that final yeah. step to yeah. do so, That's but they right. said, we'll do it. We'll yeah, do we'll it. Do it we'll do it. We'll do it. Yeah, don't maybe do after it. the next Ice Age. We'll, we'll do that. So. Speaking of Ice Ages, yeah. no, just yeah. kidding. What do we expect in the column this weekend? <laughs> well, let me see. What do we got? I talk about uh, Aetna, the CVS Aetna. I think this will be extremely good for a couple of con two or three constituencies. It will be very good for the Aetna shareholders. It will be terrific for the Aetna CEO. We'll get a half a billion dollar payout from this thing. And it'll probably be good for Rhode Island because you'll have more executives here. You'll have more high paid people. And I think it'll be good psychologically because, uh, you know, the company will be even bigger and it's based here. Unless they leave, of course. Unless they leave. Unless they leave. Unless the, the CEO, the current Larry Merlo, or the next one decides more glamorous to be in Midtown Manhattan or maybe in, uh, in that would, Boston. How big, of, no, how big of a blow would that be? Yeah, that would be a huge blow if yeah. that happens. The other possibility, I think, and I think we've talked about this before, you know, the people running great big companies, down, they really don't want to be in a suburban office park. I think there's a possibility they can end up in downtown Providence. That would be very, very interesting you know? as we look here and, all the time. Also at remember, the Aetna is a financial company. Mm -hmm. Insurance companies are financial companies. This we're, we're broadcasting this from the financial district, so there's some great synergies there. We're right next to RISD for graphic design stuff, which is great for a consumer company, mm -hmm. consumer health company like CVS. So, you know, and there's a medical school and a school of public health. Okay, leaders, listen yeah. to Bob. See? So do that. <laughs> tell us, tell him, uh, bring, yeah. it, up, bring yeah. it here downtown. Yeah. Okay, we're expecting a little snow here this weekend. Do, uh, I'm expecting <laughs> 100 inches of snow and 250 mile an hour winds and insurance. Are you, are you, all, you all ready? You all I'm ready. ready. I've already put your... in my insurance claims. <laughs> <laughs> Bob Wickham, okay. as always, it's a pleasure Trying having to be you helpful. in studio. Okay. Stay warm. We'll see Let's you next know. week. Bye bye. Everybody. Okay, drive fast, take chances. <laughs> Bob Wickham, Go Local columnist, comes in every week to talk about what's going on in the world, news, politics, environmental news. Uh, today we talked about a little what's going on in D.C., a lot about what's going on in Rhode Island, and we'll talk with him next week. But st stay tuned for his column that runs over the weekend. We'd like to try to get a little preview out of him, but you'll have to read it on Go Local Prof.